Hello and welcome back to the Gamers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. With me, I have Lawrence. Hello, everybody. I have Ryden. Hey, guys. And you may have been following us on Twitter and Facebook, and you know who our special guest is, but just in case you don't, we're going to have Lawrence introduce our special guest this week. All right, guys, so we have a special treat for you. Our special guest for the podcast this week, you may recognize him as the voice of John Lee in Dead or Alive 5. You may also have recognized him as Kinshiro in Fist of the North Star Ken's Rage, the excellent English voice actor for Lee Shaolan in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 and Tekken Blood Vengeance. But most of you may recognize him mostly as Suma Zhao in Dynasty Warriors 7 and Dynasty Warriors 8. So, on our podcast with us is KG Tang. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey. How's it going? How's it going? Good, man. It's great to be here. I'm glad Um, I'm glad Aaron uh, got us together. You know? Yeah. Yes. Like I, I know she, she came like the day, like the day of doing the interview with you guys, and she's like, you, you should, you should, you know, contact these people or whatever. And then apparently she did it for me, so I'm glad that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was literally on the podcast, I think. She was, uh, she's like, yeah, you should speak to, uh, you speak to uh, KG and. Uh... Oh, that's fantastic. Right, yeah, it was like right after we were done recording, she just throws out the mention like, oh, you can just talk to KG. Oh, really? Let me get in contact. Just tweet him. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, he'll, he'll be expecting. Just tweet. Oh, well. And lo and behold, he was actually expecting. <laughs> I, I, honestly, when she said that, I thought she was just being nice, and then you actually hit us back. Like, oh, yeah, no, we can do this. This is going to definitely happen. I was like, oh, wow. Aaron Fitzgerald with the alley-oop. Nice. <laughs> yeah, she took me out to lunch, and she was like, um, I'm hooking up with these podcast people. You should, uh, you should do their interview. I'm like, all right, Aaron. I trust you. <laughs> High praise. We thank her and we thank you for joining us. Um, We kind of... I ask this question a lot to anytime we have voice actors on the show. What what got you into voice acting specifically? Like, What what was it that, I guess, coming up, you said, you know what? Voiceover, this is what I want to do. This is what I have fun doing. How did you come to that? Uh, I'm a weird case, and I think every voice actor person has has their own little like unique story on how it happened i don't think that any two stories actually match anywhere in the history of voice actory um uh, for me like i i had no idea what voice acting really was about uh because i was doing i was a screen actor i was doing um like national like garmin gps commercial spots um <laughs> back in 2006 and 7 uh and then i did a podcast for a dubbing company and um, the director on the podcast liked the way I sounded, so he brought me in to dub uh, a show he was doing, which was The Melancholy of Haruhi Susan Mia. Um, and I thought, well, that's cool. You know, I'll get my paycheck for this. I'll move on and keep doing commercials. And I just kept getting, like, called back and called back and called back for stuff. And then suddenly I was doing video games. And then one day I was like, man. Oh, no. I remember the day it happened. Um are you guys familiar with a voice actor named Patrick Seitz? Yes. Yes, we okay. are. <laughs> Patrick is awesome. And I, I, I used to be a huge um, World of Warcraft player. <laughs> so back in my less busy days, I would sit down for like hours at a time and I would play through and I would hear Patrick in World of Warcraft as Arthas. And I was like, man, that's awesome. I'm going to make a demo. <laughs> <laughs> and then, nice. And then, yeah, I just started working professionally uh, from then on out. And uh, it's been a been a great ride well that's actually pretty cool did you get to work with patrick during uh tales of zillia because i believe yeah him. yeah and i mean i didn't get to work with him because we're never in the booth at the same time but right. i've been playing the game and i've, I've heard his manly like zhao <laughs> zhao <laughs> with the two beards because one beard is not enough you no have no to no have two beards. one no, beard you, is you not can never enough. have enough beards <laughs> <laughs> two beards side by side however is a measure of a man oh no <laughs> the, the, when i first saw zhao because uh, my brother plays it a lot. I'm sitting like, no, this guy's the beard god. It's official. <laughs> his new title is beard god. You will bow down before his massive beard. <laughs> he, he has dethroned Guan Yu. <laughs> <laughs> he has dethroned Guan Yu. Guan Yu has that one nice beard. It's permed. It's all nice and straight like Snoop Dogg's hair used to be when he first came out. No. Got to get the two side by side. Two beards. <laughs> so. Nice. Um, in regards to the t- uh, in regards to Tales of Exilia, obviously the game has just recently come out in yes. um, North America. It's coming out in Europe, I believe, tomorrow. Right, Ryden? Yep. Yeah, it comes well. Although most people have pretty much received them already because over here they just 
we have people just distributing really early and everyone gets them two days three days or whatever before oh it must be nice <laughs> yeah that must be nice that must be real nice you guys, you guys get health care over there you get your trains <laughs> early what is we, 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 we do have to pay for our health care you know we got government cheese stamps does that count <laughs> <laughs> what now well, what now <laughs> <laughs> This is America. <laughs> G stamps. <laughs> <laughs> but um, bringing it back to Tales of, uh, you're also the voice of, I believe, Raymond Oswell in Tales of Graces. Yes, um, Raymond Oswell, the biggest douche in the game who tries to kidnap Sharia and then falls in love with her right afterwards. So that dude, um, he was great. He was my first Tales game, and it was it was really special because Tales has been my favorite like JRPG series for a long time. Wow. Like I'm I'm a pretty big gamer. Like um, I came into voice acting as a really big gamer, so a lot of the times I'll go to auditions, I'll recognize what game it is, like because okay. I keep up on what's coming out and stuff. So I'll go and I'll be like, oh, this is this and this, and then they'll be freaked out and like, how did you know that? Did someone spill the beans somewhere? Holy crap! <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 I assure you, I'm just a nerd. Um, <laughs> nice. I guess that kind of lets you connect with the characters a lot more. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, I, I mean, that's, I, I think that's how I booked and ended up booking like Kenshiro back in the day because I, I knew what his, you know, the atatatas were supposed to sound like. You, you, <laughs> seem, to have a, you seem to have a few, uh, few roles like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah. couple. I mean, there's, um, there's Mr. Jan Lee from <clears throat> Dead or Alive who. Really, same company, and and one of the guys I think who was there in the booth, like directing me, was from Ken's Rage. So he was like, oh, wow. "Wait, wait, did you, did you do Ken for us?" And I was like, "Yeah, I thought, I thought that's why you hired me for Jen Lee." And they're like, <laughs> "No, that was a complete coincidence." Well, that's fantastic. Well, that fell into place just fine then. Right, exactly. <laughs> The only oh. way that could have been more perfect is if they were actually looking for you, couldn't find you, ended up hiring you anyway. It's like, yes, we got him. <laughs> Knew it. <laughs> so. uh, would you ever, would you ever like consider voicing like if there's ever another uh, Fist of the North Star anime that gets dubbed or that comes our way? Would you consider trying to voice Kenshiro in the anime? Oh my God, yeah, absolutely, I would. I mean, I. I when I was little, I, I used to watch the show, and you know, I was I was very familiar with the series before I went into audition. And like when I first stepped through the door, I didn't know what it was, and then I saw the picture of Kenshiro and was like, "Oh my god, it's a North Star! They're making a game! Well, wow, that's great." Um, but yeah, anime wise, I I would love love to do that. You know, Kenshiro is just one of those iconic characters that you know exactly. it's it's so amazing to be able to play him. Yeah. It, it was I, kind of a shame they didn't um, English dub the recent one. Uh, oh man, I know my heart. Oh, it's okay though. <laughs> Business decisions, I understand. You know. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's been a bit uh, funny with the, their English casting recently. So yeah, there's been a few games which they've avoided the English dubs on. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there was doubt if DW8 would ever get dubbed, and then lo and behold, yeah. it got dubbed. Woo! I'm glad it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a fun game. I've been playing that too. Rub it in, why don't you guys? Ah, <laughs> I'm, st- I'm oh, still. Oh, so you have You still haven't got it. Uh, hang on, Justin, have you not got it yet? Yeah. It is sitting in. I'm in Maryland right now. It is sitting in Virginia. That's a what? Oh man, I was playing it last weekend with my brother, and I left it there. Oh, <laughs> so every time I log into PSN, I see him playing. I was like, "Yep, that's that's James. He's uh." <laughs> <laughs> Cry a little, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, coming back to to characters, is there a certain character type that you feel drawn to, or is it you you just sort of voice whatever they give you, you voice to accept the challenge, or is there some type that you kind of lean towards? Like you said in Tales of Graces, you play the biggest douchebag in the game, <laughs> and and you know I I uh, over the last couple of years I I got to um I. They tended to cast me a lot for like kind of assholes. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but I get cast really easily as the asshole characters. And um, you know, Lee Shaolan, he's not an asshole, but he's assholeish. Yeah. <laughs> he's rich. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I know what you mean. He's that rich yeah. type of you know. Right. I'm gonna do this to you because I can. 
Right, because I have the money to do it. (laughs) I don't even need to be in this game. I'm too rich to be in this game. I'm just in it. (laughs) What you don't know, know, I bought my position into this game. (laughs) (laughs) That is pretty much Lee Shaolan in a nutshell. He pretty much goes, you know, I don't need to be part of the King of Iron Fist tournament, but because Kazuya is in it, I want to fight him, and therefore I'm in it. But I don't need the money. (laughs) Exactly. So also, also, I have this fabulous uh, purple leather vest with a unicorn on it. And I have to show it off, and just <laughs> in it. Oh man! And the ending of his fight lab pretty much just exemplifies how much oh, Lee Shaolin okay. just doesn't care. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, then you go oh, voicing characters like Shaolin. Raymond and Lee Shaolin to someone like Sima Zhao, who's really a, a sort of laid back. You know, I really don't care for much except my family, my friends. Beyond that, pff, whatever. How do- oh man, Suma Zhao. Suma Zhao is. I won't say he's um the easiest character I ever played, but he's he's the closest like to me personally, like as a person, which is probably why I got cast as him because I there was very little acting involved. But um, my my girlfriend actually who sat down and played the game for a while. Um, as as Suma Zhao, she was like, "Wow, I can see why you were cast as this guy. He's very much like you." I'm like, "Yeah, because I'm handsome." And she's like, "No, because you're lazy." As- <laughs> 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 oh man! Uh, well, <laughs> friend, youth shade. It was. Okay. <laughs> well, when you when you start getting labeled, you know. Ah. <laughs> uh, in, but in general, with Suma Zhao's character, you can kind of see he starts out that kind of lazy, but then he starts growing as a character. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Motivated, using his brain more, you know, thinking things through more. And especially in Dynasty Warriors 8, where he kind of has that voice in his head in Jia Chong. Yeah, you know, his mom's telling him to go outside and play. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. He just wants to eat some meat buns, hang out with his wife. As long as he doesn't take Suma Shur's meat buns again. <laughs> oh, man. I remember yeah. that mission? <laughs> People died over that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, as, as funny as that stage was, as I'm racking up the chaos, I'm like, People are dying. People, people are legit meat dying over meat buns. <laughs> Damn, Ancient China, you scary. <laughs> <laughs> you stole my precious meat bun. Jin Army, advance. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, you mentioned that. You know, there wasn't much acting involved because Simi Zhao is close to you personally or personality wise. Did you find that as a challenge? Because there are s- some similarities, I guess, in the personality or in the way you styled the voice. Was that challenging for you or did you find that it was a little bit easier to connect? No, that? I mean, Suma Zhao sessions are always like it, it sounds weird to say because there's so much like fight stuff involved, but they're always very relaxing because I get to play it very close to home. Right. So, you know, it's 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 very easy for me to project myself onto the character. Like, um, uh, like the more character stuff you have to, you have to like, you know, okay, I'm going to have to layer a bunch of stuff over myself, um, to bring something to it. But Suma Zhao, uh, didn't need a lot of layers initially to begin with. Um, so yeah, he was very, very relaxing to play. Like, um, I didn't have to overanalyze a lot of it, you know, at all. Okay. Right. I can just I could I could more than most characters I could play it from my gut. Cool. Okay. Right. That yeah. I can see that. You, yeah, I can actually hear like your normal voice sounds like Suma Zhao. Yeah, a little like, bit, right? <laughs> so, yeah. It, you know, whereas some people you hear their normal voice and it's like, wait, you don't sound like this character. Yeah. You know, I can I can hear how, what you mean with like Suma Zhao is just pretty much just you know you. Yeah, and. I mean, the way I auditioned for him, because um, I read his character description, I was like, oh, this dude is very, like, very similar to, so I'm lazy too, hey. Um, so they called me back pretty much immediately. They're like, we really liked your take on it. And I was like, oh, okay, there we go. It was, it, was, it was the perfect fit. It was the perfect casting and perfect fit, and I feel really grateful for that. Nice. Awesome. Uh, I'm sorry, we... No, I was I was just about to say. See, now for once, I don't feel outnumbered on this podcast because normally everyone here is a shoe homer here, 
justin likes you ryden likes you and the and super benevolence michelle (laughs) likes you but i'm usually the the lone gin guy here oh yeah so finally i have to ask i have to ask ask. do you actually when when you play the game do you actually play gin or do you have another kingdom that you sort of gravitate towards um this for dynasty warrior 7 i played through every um uh every single um, kingdom Uh, for eight because my time is limited uh, because I've been thankfully I've been working a lot this year, but um, that is not great for gaming. So when I picked up DW eight, I had just enough time to play through the gin campaign before, um, before I had to basically stop and move on to something else for a little bit. So you started Um, with gin. Yeah. So it's not that I don't want to play through the other ones. It's just, I haven't had time to, Oh, well, these are good problems to have. Yeah, they are. They are very good problems to have. Uh, but I do I, I do plan on sitting down and finishing the entire game through uh, every kingdom. And also, I, I want to start playing Jin because my girlfriend's like, I want to hear you. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> like, I want to hear you. Like, right now? No, in the game. <laughs> I can just talk to you. No, no, no. I want to hear you coming through the TV. Come on, let's go. You know, you know the drill. You know the drill. No, I, I want. Okay, I want to hear the character, not you. <laughs> uh, uh, since you so, since you are such a gaming fan, are there any you uh, you mentioned you have a love of JRPGs? Are there any other kinds of games that you sort of gravitate towards, or? Uh, yeah, I I'm a big lover of fighting games. Um, I was that when I was growing up. I was that little Asian kid in like the Pizza Hut, like uh, like Street Fighter Two cabinet. Who knew the special moves, you know? Nice. Um, <laughs> this was before the internet. You had to ask your friends how to Hadouken. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like, I, I, I love Street Fighter. I love um, I love Marvel. Um, uh, like, even... You guys remember that Tatsunoko versus Capcom game on the Wii? Yes. yes. I, I was one of the seven people who bought that. <laughs> and one of the two people who bought the arcade stick to go <laughs> along with it. <laughs> That yeah, I, I don't really know anyone who had a uh, arcade stick with a Wii. Oh my god! Well, now you know someone. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, best and worst seventy dollars I ever spent. But um, yeah, like I love tons of fighting games. I love um, I, I, JRPGs. Like I said, um, I like I, I like survival horror. Like The Last of Us was like the greatest, like one of the greatest games I ever played. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I, yeah, I, I love that game. Ah, oh, it's so good. The That's whole so way, good. the whole way through was just fantastic. I, I can only play it for like two hours at a time max because it's so tense and it never gets any less <laughs> tense. You know what I'm saying? Right. S- especially when you're creeping through some of those rooms with those tickers. Yeah. Oh my god. Like <laughs> the game t- tricks it took you. A long time. Like every once in a while, it's like, oh, you're gonna get to a safe spot. <laughs> it's not that safe. <laughs> it takes a, like a long. You know, you get to these little tiny little rooms but it takes you you know best part of half an hour or so just to get across there yeah because you're trying yeah. to plan your way and, and be quiet so you don't attract them S- super tense game i love it though yeah, i that need was to until i learned about molotovs oh my god molotovs <laughs> i love molotovs <laughs> saving graces i need to run my way through last of us because i have the game but that's been more the thing my family's been playing like my okay. uncle's played it, my brother's played it, but I need to, I need to eventually work my way over to Last of Us. Yes, it's so good. Yes, you do. It's <laughs> so good. Yeah, everyone keeps saying you're missing out. I'm like, but I have Wait. this here. <laughs> no, you really are, man. It's it's one of the best games I've ever played. Like just from a storytelling, visual, and just atmosphere point of view, oh, it's so good. I, I think the um the, the motion capture really kind of adds that extra emotion oh, yeah. in there as well doesn't it when, when you see like the face on Ellie yeah. and whatever it's just yeah it's a whole new level of awesome it's so good right nice well you, you... Uh, no I'm sorry go ahead no I was about to bring this back to the JRPG subject okay uh, I was about to say since you mentioned you have a love for JRPGs um, I'm not sure if you've heard of this franchise but since you've mentioned you had a love for JRPGs are you um do you remember the Breath of Fire series? Yes, I do remember the Breath of Fire series. I played some of the early ones, earlier ones, and I haven't, um, uh, I haven't actually caught up. But um, yes, I am familiar with those. 
Okay, because I wanted to bring this to the uh, bring this back to what was recently announced for like Breath of Fire Six. Mm-hmm. That they announced for um, the uh, I think it was they said for the iOS and like PC, and they weren't going to make a console version of that. They weren't. That, f- nice. From what I heard, Capcom said they weren't going to make a console version of a Breath of Fire Six. That's weird. But, th- but then didn't it kind of get announced that it was coming on a Wii U? Did it? Did it? I will have to check through God knows how much feed through my Twitter. But yeah, I, I, I believe that was the case. I mean, I can Google search and see if that's the case. Okay. I mean, if they're, it's coming to the Wii U, I can see like a lot of chances for like really fun kind of like innovation with the Wii U pad and stuff, right. you know? Right. That'd be kind of fun. Well, when when the Wii U pad first or when the Wii U first came out, they debuted the pad. I looked at it and I said, "This would be perfect if someone can figure out how to do a tabletop game through the Wii." <gasps> oh the my pad god! Is built for that. Like, that's the that is thing genius. That came to my mind. That's awesome. Because if you think that about is... it, you you just have your your game master has the pad. They're, yeah. They're editing the world real time. The Spawning are, monsters and from the players. There you go. It's built for it. It's there. The technology oh is there. So. That game writes right. itself. That's awesome. I would totally play that game. Okay, just Googled no, no Wii U. Oh. Um, well, may, thanks for been, getting our hopes been kind of rumor, but yeah, it's got Android, <laughs> iOS, and PC. I think, I think it's kind of meant to be a, a, more of like a social game build. Oh, right. I don't know how that works, but, you know. <laughs> that, that's what I was, I was about to ask, uh, KG, if, you know... Do, do you feel like JRPGs thrive better, or do you think that their future is that type of format? You know, the tablet, iOS type of format, or, you know, do you think they should stick with trying to go into console games? Um, currently, I feel like JRPGs uh, cater to the same niche market they've catered to for a long time. And that's good and bad. Um, that's good as in they're always going to have that audience, and they're always going to sell, you know, X number of games. It's bad that in the sense that it, it doesn't sell as well as it could to a lot of Western audiences. Yeah. Um, right. And I think, I think especially now Japanese companies are trying to be more innovative with their JRPGs, trying to um, – I don't, I don't know if they should try and copy Western RPGs because they haven't had a lot of success in doing that. Uh. Um, but something has to change uh, in order for more, you know, Western audiences to latch on and spend more money on them. And I hope they figure it out because you know it's such a great, it's such a great genre. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I would I would be really sad to see it die. Right. I mean, yeah. w- one problem I have with JRPGs now is that because they're so time they are so time consuming with you know the amount of kind of grinding and whatever else you need to be doing in the games i just never have the time to finish them <laughs> yeah. oh my god i feel you i feel you i'm sitting down and i'm playing exilia i'm like how am i going to finish this game in the next year <laughs> <laughs> american rpg yeah 40 hours jrpg the timer will read all nines <laughs> <laughs> but see that that's sort of like you say, the good and the bad. There's grinding, but the the really good JRPGs, the ones that stand out, make the grinding fun, or they make it so yeah. you don't. It doesn't feel like such a grind. Like if you take the Disguise series, it has an insanely high level cap, and there are ways to grind quickly, but they do it in such a way that it's rewarding for you as the player. So you feel okay. I even though I don't have to do this, if I do this, it pays off later on in the end, and it's not right. tedious. Right, right. I'm I'm one of those people actually. Speaking of grinding, like it's never bothered me too much, because I'm like an old school player of like the old EverQuest one, when it first came out. Nice. All right, so like grinding to me is kind of like modern grinding is just kind of like an abstract like okay whatever I'll fight a few more monsters. Right. Back in my day in EverQuest, <laughs> see, see, that was the only way to level. <laughs> and if you died, you lost the level. Yes. And people could loot your corpse. <laughs> you don't know see, struggle until... Yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, I'm playing, like, when, when I first started playing, like, World of Warcraft, people were like, this is hard. I'm like, man... Go to hell. You don't know how. <laughs> They're like, oh man, we have to get 20 people together to raid. I'm like, uh-huh. And? <laughs> That's so the point. 
this MMO, massively multiplayer. Right. <laughs> um, that see that type of attitude when it comes to grindings, like my brother, because my you you say EverQuest was your thing for grinding. My brother plays Seven Saga. Seven Saga. So- I don't think I ever played that. It's an RPG notorious in the SNES days for its horrible, horrible difficulty range. Like, you could be in the first area, and you could be, like, level, like, 20 to 30s, and you can still get one shot by bosses. What? Like, it, like SNES, in the SNES days, that was, like, Demon Souls, Dark Souls level of, <laughs> you need to grind. I was just about to ask, was it made by Atlas? Uh, oh, I need to check. I need to see who actually made Seven Saga. But ever since that game, my brother has been perpetually scarred from <laughs> RPGs to where to where he will play, uh, fi- as an example, this is something he's done. Final Fantasy VII, in the very first area with Cloud and Barrett, yeah, he mm-hmm. will level up until all his limit breaks are done, and Cloud and Barrett are level 40 before fighting the Red Scorpion. Well, <laughs> so, this, is what, see, this is what Seven see, Saga not- did to him. I'm not too far from that. I mean, when when I play uh, a lot of these RPGs, I I will grind and I'll kind of set myself a limit. I'll say I'm not going to leave this area until I'm level ten, level fifteen, yeah. etc. And then I just keep kind of working towards those levels. And, and then I, when I actually get to a boss fight, it's just a piece of piss. <laughs> well, see, what, I think it's that sort of attitude that in the Fire Emblem series, uh, the first Fire Emblem, they had. Um, for those that don't know, Fire Emblem, tactical RPG, uh, the battles are set. There's not really random battles. But in the first Fire Emblem, they had something called the arena. You can send your characters to the arena and just have them battle out anyone and everyone that comes on. And it's a great way to level grind. But because of how leveling is set up in Fire Emblem, it's hit or miss. Apparently, people would do like you guys. They just keep grinding and grinding. Like, okay, I now have an invincible character. Let's go. <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> Nintendo tried to alleviate that a little bit, I think, through DLC for Fire Emblem Awakening, which I'm also in, um, Owain. Um, and they, they released this, like, level up and money DLC where it's like, all right, we know you're going to spend, like, hours and hours grinding. We're making it a little easier for you um, by releasing these enemies that make you level up, like, a lot when you kill them, right? And they released a map that you can download, and uh, it makes grinding, like, a ton easier, Right. I believe they. I believe they did. Um, uh, there was DLC which was released for the Tales of Asperia, which you could, uh, which you get a currency and I think experience points as well, just by downloading uh, these DLC packs. You can do that in uh, Exelia too. And races, ah. yeah. Huh. That, I think that's becoming like the new uh, way to alleviate the grinding for JRPGs. They pay make... money for levels. <laughs> <laughs> right. Basically, like you can pay money and they'll give if you pay. Uh, I believe it was like $5, you'll get 500,000 gold and graces. You pay this amount of money, you get like two levels here. You pay this amount of money, you get ten levels. And I think that's becoming the new, you know, microtransaction, so to speak, for JRPGs. You can either grind it out and get the money, or you can pay such and such amount of real dollars to get, you know, this little boost here to help you progress from where you're at. But that just takes everything that the game's supposed to be away from it. (laughs) Well, well... It's not really new, though, because if you think about it, this is the old, well, I shouldn't say old, this is the MMO model. Yes, you can level grind and unlock the gear, or you can pay and get better (laughs) gear. So it's not really anything new, and if, hey, if that's what someone wants to do, that's what they want to do. They're just setting it up for them. Yeah, as a business model, I respected it. It works. Right. It's a good business model. It's a good market for it. Um, Lazy gamers. But... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, I personally don't do that because, like I said, grinding is not that big a deal to me. It's like, oh, well, I'll spend another hour, you know, that's cool. I'll keep this five bucks for lunch, you know. Um, I, I, and so, yeah, like I said, I, I respect the business model. Um, it's probably going to continue for a long time. Right. <laughs> personally, not for me. See, I'm. I mean, I, I wasn't I wasn't into uh, the world of Warcraft. When, when I hit the, the point of actually adopting a uh, MM. Uh, a massive multiplayer online game. The first one I did, I was choosing between uh, Final Fantasy XI, World of Warcraft, which was just coming out, I think, mm-hmm. and Star Wars Galaxies. <laughs> I picked Final <laughs> Fantasy as a Final Fantasy fan, so, and then I kind of, you know, I stuck with that. And th- there was one that was all subscription based. There was none of this uh, pay for um, levels, unless of course you 
paid illegally out, right. you know, away from the system for uh, to gold buy farmers. characters and gold and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or I guess it would be gill farmers. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Yeah. I, I didn't realize I always thought that was just a joke on the internet until I actually started no, reading no. articles about it oh no there were legit businesses set up for hey need some gold there the, the <laughs> yeah. still are they're the, the still about yeah, yeah. on these um, on these subscription based <clears throat> games they, they still linger up because you can't um, physically buy these things yourself right so you if you want to go around the houses you have to you end up having to pay one of these uh companies or whatever and it, i mean i wouldn't use one because i wouldn't be one i would i didn't want to cheat the game and it breaches all the terms etc of um two it kind of takes the fun out of things and yeah. i'm not paying you know I, I don't know whether they're actually going to deliver the goods you could just p- pay money over the internet and you don't know whether someone's actually going to give you what you've uh, paid for so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't do it yeah I, i'm 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 one of those I'm with I'm with KG on this one you know back in my day <laughs> I, I, that's first thing. like I I would see on uh, like one uh, one example I would see people on like Pokemon forums who would be like you know what level do, you know what level do I need to be to beat such and such gym and I'm like the area you're at has a place where you can grind a level sixty just go there and they're like well that's why would you need to be level sixty you're complaining to me about the level <laughs> you're complaining <laughs> that you can't beat this gym yet you don't want to grind a level sixty. I, I think that was my, yeah, it was Pokemon Red was my first real experience with having to grind because I picked Charmander because I'm sitting there like, hey, he turns into a dragon. I'm like, <laughs> nah, that was what, sixth grade? So I'm like 12, 13. I'm like, dragons are awesome. Don't worry, Justin. <laughs> I probably would have picked that too. Uh, first gym is Rock. It's Brock. So I was like, <laughs> crap. So I grinded to... <laughs> I could at least make a dent in him because they don't give you anything that can even stand up to rock Pokemon at that point. Finally Wait. get through that. They, they give you the Mankey. No, they don't do that until yellow. That's <laughs> true. Wait. Oh, wow. In okay. red and blue, true. you are SOL. They give you Pikachu and Bugs. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Bugs technically could, couldn't they? Nope. Bugs was weak <laughs> against Rock. I know. I know. You know the what, at, what point, though, at what point, though, they, they gave Charmander or whatever Metal Claw. Like, yeah. And, uh, you know, just, this... just to throw you a freaking bone. Like, okay. <laughs> no, no. I struggled with my Charmander. And then I, what, I force evolved him to finally get to Misty. And I was like, well, for fuck's sake, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so I had a Pokemon that wouldn't obey me because I grinded too much going against Misty. And all I had was, what was it? It was a Charmeleon at that point, a Beedrill. I was just like, this can't be life, man. This can't you know what I'm still waiting for, like, from Red Days? I'm still waiting for them to find an excuse to bring Missing No back as an actual Pokemon. One that... Wouldn't that be amazing? Like missing no just shows up in the next Pokemon as a legendary. That would be awesome. Or may, even not as a as a Pokemon itself. I would take maybe a side quest where you're talking to someone like Professor Oak and he says, "Well, you know we created Porygon and Porygon too. Well, we kind of screwed up too." We made <laughs> that would be awesome. I would like th- I would like there to be kind of like a self referential. Um, you could say quest or something like that to missing now. Yeah, that would that would be kind of cool as a kind of nice callback to yeah. Red and Blue because everybody did the missing no glitch. Oh, of course. I, I don't know a single person who didn't do it. When unfortunately, when I did it, I got the the bad uh, missing now, which sucked. Oh, the one like, uh, break the game or? Uh, I think um I got instead of missing now I got M. Ah. So that one was mm. kind of like um oh uh, shoot. Um, soft reset quickly. Soft reset got out of there. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who brought it up. It was on my Facebook feed, but someone was uh, suggesting why didn't they? Why didn't Nintendo release a Skylanders game but with Pokemon? You know, where you go into the shop and you physically buy these uh, these Pokemon. Don't no. See, you said it. <laughs> Now you said it, they're going to listen, and it's going to be done. Oh, man, even more money. <laughs> well, see, the, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, back when Pokemon was really getting hot, they had this thing called the Battle Stadium. It was just like this regular Pokemon stadium, and you bought little Pokemon figurines, you put them on it and made noises like, hey, we're battling. Hmm. That's essentially the next step. 
just go the Skylanders route. Thank you, Raiden. You've you given know, it you know, though, another idea. Disney's just done it with Infinity. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I guess that, that's... Uh, on one hand, I'm happy that this is the new model because if they start doing things like this, it means they don't have a justification for really restrictive DRM anymore. Because if, if your whole thing is, I'm worried about piracy, if you set up your economy and your ecosystem in such a way that if you pirate it, you don't get the core, I shouldn't say the core function of the game, but you don't get beyond the core functionality of the game, you should be okay. As long as you're not restricting core functionality to these microtransactions. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. Um... <laughs> We were talking about MMOs earlier, and Sword Art Online just debuted on Toonami a week ago. Yes. And yes. I've been reading and hearing that this is this is going to be the next big thing for the year. At Otakon is tomorrow. Everyone's probably going to be either cosplaying that or Attack on Titan. <laughs> Sword Art, uh, I Sword Art Online is one hell of a show. Um, it's I. You know, everyone makes uh, the reference to Dot Hack, but um, I feel like Sword Art is just, especially the first half of the show, like the first twelve episodes, are just so strong. Um, I, have, have you guys seen it? Have you guys seen the show? I caught the first episode, but that's all I've seen up to this point. Keep I'm watching it because, like, week. it's it's like something major happens like every episode that leaves you going, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" Well, that escalated quickly. Well, that escalated <laughs> quickly. You know, it's like, you know, it's just like it, it, sometimes the show, and I love it because it, the show tricks you into like sometimes this episode is happy go lucky, and then someone dies, and you're like, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like that Game guy's not coming back. <laughs> yeah, that that kind of that kind of sank in for me in the second episode last week when they aired it, and I was watching it like. Oh, they're actually in this fight. Oh, wait, this character died. And if they die here... Oh, no. Oh. That stuff gets really dark really fast, let me tell you. If you haven't seen the show, around episode, um, I want to say three to four, things get really messed up. Like, uh, okay, really so like this week up. and next week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, man, I'm already looking at this like, this is going to be a screwed up show, isn't it? Oh, it's uh, going to be... I majorly screwed up show for, for for those of you listening that don't know what sword art online is it is it has been called the spiritual successor to the dot hack series it's essentially a massively multiplayer online game where i don't know if they're trapped in it or they're just connected in such a way that if you die in that world you die in this world uh, they're they're officially trapped in the world. Okay. In the yeah. first episode, they are tr they're trying to log out of I think their beta servers, and they've realized the logout function was missing. And the creator of the game logs in and tells everyone that this was an intentional design choice because he wanted to create his own world and control it. So he has trapped all the players in this virtual reality MMO, and the nerve links that they use to connect themselves into the universe are connected in such a way that if they are disconnected for any reason in the real world, it'll unleash a, I believe they said, a microwave flash through their brain, and it will kill them in the, their world if they remove the, the nerve connector in any way. In, co you know, in contrast, if they die in the virtual world, they die in real life as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, their brains explode, basically. The, <laughs> the first time, the, as great as the show is, the first thought I had was, like these are the worst beta testers in the world. How could you how could you go into a game knowingly like you know that you can't leave this game unless you log out? How did that make it past alpha? <laughs> like you would think someone at some point would go, "Hey, you know, let's just just for fun, just what if there was a bug that we couldn't log out?" That would be that would kind of suck, right? Well, see, that was the alpha test, and all the alpha <laughs> testers that noticed that got the microwave. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh man, but yes, definitely check out Sword On Online if you haven't done so already. Cage uh, Cage is in it, and who who do you who do you voice in the series? 
Okay, I don't know if it, something's gone on, but I can't actually hear you guys. Uh, Hello? Yeah, I think we just um, had... Uh, <laughs> something just happened. <laughs> something... Uh-oh. No! Technical difficulties on Skype. <laughs> Hello. Okay. All right, there we Hello go. Back. And we're back. <laughs> Thank you, Skype. <laughs> no idea what happened there. Oh. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, before we We're all just logged out. Of so. Yes. Oh. <laughs> my, my, my brain almost fried. <laughs> we were talking about force logouts in Sword Art Online, and Skype's like, oh, yeah, you think it's funny, don't you? <laughs> See, th there you go. If this happened in Sword Art Online, we'd all be dead. Yeah, we'd all be dead. <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah. See, right when I was saying that I, I did make the connection to the point KG was making on the first episode, this proves the point. <laughs> that they should have had another way to get out of the game. Right? What if, what if you have a bad internet connection and you're playing? Oh, but How crappy would that be? <laughs> what about a power cut? Oh, yeah. I, oh, man. That, that, yeah, you know what? I can see I can see that point now. Because <laughs> like, now I'm looking at it like, mm, you know what? Maybe they should have had something other than the logout button. Right. But then, it's, but then again, I don't know if the players knew about the whole you know nerve thing. Like I've, I, the way it was explained, it was as if they could always just disconnect and I'll be like, oh, it's no problem. Okay. I, I'm not sure. I don't know, man. I, I just figure someone along the way had to file some kind of complaint going, can we get like a control-alt-delete kind of thing up in here? Can, can we you get know? a hard reset button? Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> an can I just summon the task something. manager? <laughs> can I just summon task manager and close what I'm doing? Right. No? That's great. Oh. <laughs> we got on Sword Art Online because Cage actually voices one of the characters in the, sh uh, in the series. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you voice... If it's not too much of a spoiler. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, episode 5 and 6, I'm a character named Schmidt. Um, he's a uh, he's big, like, big kind of dragoony lancer guy. And he, um, there's this, there's this, oh, I don't want to spoil the plot. But basically, he, he messes things up for everyone. And, like, um, so they basically have to go through these two episodes and fix the mess he started. And... He learns his lesson in the end, and, you know, it's all happy-go-lucky, except, you know, people died. Um, <clears throat> so, not so much happy-go-lucky. More not happy at all. Um, sounds a bit of a douche. A little, <laughs> bit, a little bit of a douche, you know, keeping with the theme. I'm noticing a uh, pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, those couple episodes are uh, really great. Um, actually, I had, I had my best... Um, pickup line like it okay so i was really proud of this because uh it, I, i've never gotten one to sound so like seamless before basically what happened was we had to stop in the middle of a line for a technical reason like in the middle of a sentence right and um so basically what what we do then is we try to either do the line over or we beep into the line like you know they'll play me back what i had said and I just sort of jump in right in the middle of the sentence. Um, and I, I I got it to sound like so, like almost like it wasn't broken, like exactly like it wasn't broken. And we were all like, yay, saves us so much work. Anyway. Um, nice. <laughs> one of the prouder <laughs> moments as a voice actor. Because that shit's like, oh, can I not cuss? I'm sorry. I told no, you. Well, can. It doesn't matter. We, it's fine. Yeah, we don't, we don't mind. Okay. It's it, it it's harder than you think like to like pick up exactly where you left off and make it sound like you were just talking. Um usually it doesn't work out too well, but this time it worked out pretty well. So, uh I was glad that happened and saved us another 10 minutes of work. Um it it's it's episode 5 and 6 like is is really really kind of I I feel exemplifies how dark the show can get because it like the show basically is this huge like study on what would what would the human mentality be if something like this actually happened like because they outright say is like thousands of people never even leave the first level okay. you know right cuz it's like you're stuck in here for years you have the real chance of dying a lot of people are like well screw that i'm just going to sit here 
I'm gonna be a merchant. You know, like I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna hang out in the first level and do nothing, and then I'll be okay. Right. You you, you don't know? run the risk of just randomly dying because you encountered an enemy too strong for you. Yeah, exactly. So like the game is left with the this, these handful of players really, um, who are bent on beating the game. And as the years go on, there's just less and less and less of them. You know, so. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's really interesting to watch what people do in that kind of situation. It's a very long beta. Hmm? Yeah. That's a very long beta. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we will play, we'll have this beta version out for uh, about a year or so, or until all you guys are dead. You know, whichever <laughs> comes first. Whichever comes, whichever comes first. Um, cause, and then Sword Art Online, they drive home that point right in the very first episode. Yeah. In the first episode, they go, one month later, 2,000 players died. Died, yeah. And it's like, wow, really? It, yeah. But one, one thing I do wonder about Sword Art Online is, does every everything they do in the game world affect their real world selves? Like, as long as they keep eating and... So like that in the game world, they're fine. Uh, in the no, real world. no, actually, they have to be hooked up to machines in the real world. Um, food in Sword Art uh, just makes you feel full in Sword Art. Your body's still kind of wasting away um, in oh, real life. Wow. So um, they'll cover this in the next episode. They're like, hey, remember that time when everyone went offline for just a second because they had to move everyone to hospitals um, to hook them on? Onto like you know machines that will keep them alive, basically. Oh wow! Wow, that's you know. yeah. This is okay. This is going to be a very dark series then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, smart. a lot of people didn't even make it because they just starved to death. Wow. Okay, that answers that answers a question I was wondering about in regards to Sword Art Online. Wow. I, I can definitely see why this show is so acclaimed as it is. Uh, check it on the Toonami if you haven't already. Um, yeah, part of the Toonami lineup at, I believe, 2 a.m. every Saturday night slash Sunday morning, however you look at it. But it's part of the Toonami lineup on 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay. Which is something that we guys in the UK don't get. I was just about to say, can I just Aww. say how grateful we, we, I am so we, that we, Toonami we, is back? <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't get it. Uh, I think the... When when someone was actually directing me to uh, check out Sword Art Online, uh, the only thing that was a, that was available that they showed me online from uh, from one of the pages was all Japanese dub, which oh, I don't mind mm-hmm. watching Japanese dub. But yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much all we, all we've had so far. Yeah, yeah, it's like the raw footage of it instead of. Well, the... we've only just got one piece released over here. Oh wow. Wow, and Fairy Tale I think is only just coming out here as well. Yeah, so yeah, we're, we're we're really behind here. <laughs> <laughs> but say, I have to say, like right now, I think the top just long running manga, One Piece and Fairy Tale are up there. And if you guys are just getting them, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it's because I mean, because you guys have uh, Funimation who basically do everything. Yeah, Funimation, um, Viz, Aniplex. But we can't. We have to rely on uh, just a small, uh, small company really over here, which is the Manga UK site, um, and they're the only ones that really bring in anything over here. Which they're slowly bringing the stuff here, and we've, we're slowly getting the the final parts of the orange boxes for Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> which yeah, again, <laughs> is like real slow. Um, so we we have to be patient here. I, I think a lot of the guys, um, a lot of people here, just end up having to try and find it online somewhere or. Um, torrent it or something. I, mean, I don't torrent, so that's Excellent. not something I do. And neither yeah. should you. No. Nope. <laughs> piracy is no. bad, kids. Yes. No. It, it piracy is really bad. But um, you know, it's, it's kind of what you know what people end up doing because we, you know, it takes so long to get anything over here. And when we've had, I mean, I've bought DVDs and stuff from America. Not everything works on our players, even our region free players. Oh wow. Which kind of sucks. Region free, except for Region One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've got I've got Region free DVDs, and I mean I think it's okay with now with Blu-ray. Um, but when it comes to Region free DVDs, I've had some which I've played in my uh, sorry uh, Region One DVDs in my Region free player, and it's got no color or it's got funny sound or, or whatever. It's just 
doesn't you know doesn't work as it's supposed to. Wow, man, Th- that that whole scenario, like I was saying earlier, I'm just so glad Toonami is back. <laughs> and I don't say that to rub it in for Raiden. I say that because Toonami, like when Toonami, well, when I first started watching, I just got back to America. My dad had just we all moved back here, moved back to Virginia. And that's how I got introduced to Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, because over there, we stayed in uh, Osan Air Force Base, Korea. We had Voltron. Like, that that, that was the only thing that kind of came on the three channels we got. So that sort of introduced me to that whole world of, yeah, this is brand new animation. I'm like, whoa, what is this? So I'm... I'm even if it is just Saturday nights, I'm glad that other people can get introduced to the same things that sort of got me got me to where I am now. Yeah, it's a really good it's a really good lineup. I, God, remember remember when Toonami first ended and they had that really oh. sad like oh man. Thing I, remember. Oh. I remember I remember that and he just ended it with bang and <laughs> and then every, I, I I think that was when everyone on. Even the depths of the backslash B boards, we just started bawling at that one. We're like, oh my god, no! In the very like little corners, and see you, Space Cowboy, and you're like, yeah. oh no, oh no, Steve Bloom, why? I I had to hold back manly sobs on that one. Oh no, I I, I, I shed the single thug tear. You know, you get one thug <laughs> tear. Just just let it roll, let it roll. Oh man, I. Re- I'll, and oddly enough, for me, Toonami wasn't exactly where I first saw anime. I, like, my first anime wasn't from Toonami. My first anime was from the USA Network in uh, in the morning before I'd go to school. Ah, uh, Street Fighter? Uh, it was... They, they showed Street Fighter, but they also showed Sailor Moon. Oh, on the, yes. In the mornings. And that was my first anime, Sailor Moon. Alright, I, 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 I don't know if I've told my Sailor Moon story on the show yet. I've seen maybe two... Well, I've seen more because um, my fiancé and I were watching the first season of Sailor Moon. But before then, the only two episodes I've seen, they all die horribly graphic deaths. And I was like, <laughs> what is this? This is not what was advertised to me. What? What is going on? <laughs> you see these images of these little, you know, cute girls and everything else, and that's what you get. <laughs> I, I'm thinking like it's just going to be... A on flux. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be your standard magical girl show. I'm like, okay, I can watch this with my god sister, whatever. Everyone dies horribly. And it's not like they just die. It, these are graphic, terrible deaths, like impolation, eaten alive. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and now we're getting a new Sailor Moon show to commemorate uh, which anniversary just came up for it? I want to say 25th. Uh, I want to say. Yes. They said we are getting a brand new Sailor Moon show, which will reflect the current values of today, which makes me uh, scared. Uh, because what's <laughs> hot today is Sword Art Online, Attack on Titan, um, the new Code Geass, which is a lot of mood whiplash death. So I am afraid. This is going to be a very dark and gritty Sailor Moon series. Sailor Moon begins. I hope Tuxedo Mask actually does something this time. Well, I mean, you know, I, he was there, styling, profiling. Just... I just want him to do something more than throw a rose. Like, I, I, something. Yeah. Shoot someone. I don't know. Like, <laughs> that is, I will say that is one thing I remember a lot in, um, in Sailor Moon. Tuxedo Mask was there. But he was simply there because Sailor Moon had a crush on him and he needed to show up. I, I, I didn't get much plot importance out of Tuxedo Mask out of that or anything he did. He didn't really seem to help so much. He, he didn't. Like, if, if, if Sailor Moon really just needs that rose, why not just carry some damn roses with you? Like, like if the sight of a rose will, like, reinvigorate your fighting spirit or whatever the heck... Like that whole plot point was, I think she just needs to carry a basket of freaking roses around, all right? Because <laughs> that's gonna save everyone a lot of time, all right? And a lot like of hard. Mask doesn't need to get up with his like little top hat. He, he can stay home, you know. No, what, what what annoys me? He gets a sword later on and never 
never uses it. I'm like, what is this? You have a legit weapon now. You can actually fight. Nope. Rose. <laughs> rose. <laughs> just, just throw a rose. <sighs> My roses are fabulous. <laughs> See, oh one th- one thing I did like about the the tuxedo mask story was it was kind of like the first. Well, obviously, well, well, no, I can't really count Star Wars for this. But it was like the first time where I'm watching the series, and I'm like, okay, come on. He's obviously that boy you know from school. She's obviously Serena. How come you two can't recognize each other? It's the Clark Kent effect, man. I was just yeah. about to say, it's Clark Kent. I was just looking like, come on, just just get get to it. Just get to the point. Get to, Even as a kid, I was like, why can't they recognize each other? And then when they finally did the reveal, I was like, thank you. <laughs> but it was well done, but I was like, couldn't this have been done sooner? <laughs> so many lives could have been saved. <laughs> we went through so much because of this. Uh, uh, and it took them 80 episodes or so to finally get through with it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, I am... I, I'm actually going to say this. I'm excited. I want to see the new direction, supposed new direction they take Sailor Moon. Uh, I, my fear is, though, that, like we joked around, it'll be a gritty sort of tuxedo mask rises. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would watch that show a lot. I, you oh think my the God. moon is your ally? Ah, oh, hell, here we go. <laughs> When Tokyo is ashes, <laughs> I'm permission to die. <laughs> Just murdering people with rose rings. Uh, the mask finally has enough. <laughs> I am Queen Barrel's legacy. <laughs> uh, the moon rises. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, it took us a year late, but we finally got a Bane reference in the show. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed it took us this long to, to sort of work Bane. Uh, I, I, was, I was saying this yesterday because uh, everyone on Twitter is talking about their unpopular opinions, and mm-hmm. my I'm, I'm going to say this now: Batman as a character by himself, he's pretty boring, and I feel like Nolan's movies really <laughs> exemplify that. I think depends how he's written. There we go. That might uh, be it. Depends on who's writing him. Either he's really boring or he's pretty cool. Like, um, have you guys ever... I, they just came out with an animated movie of this recently, but um, the graphic novel, the dark, I think it's called The Dark Knight Returns. Yes. Where, it's, a, where it's an older Batman. I will say, that is one of the better Batman stories. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, that is an example of, I feel, how you should write Batman. Um, a lot of people don't write him as well, you know? He just becomes really 2D sometimes. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just a lot of the, a lot of the ways people try to write him now. It's just, he just comes off as very, eh, I know everything, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I would say Dark Knight, Ri- or The Dark Knight Returns, and I actually really liked Under the Red Hood. That's another... Oh, Under, Under the Red, Red Hood was awesome. awesome. That's another great interpretation of just, not just Batman, but Bruce, and just seeing how everything just sort of breaks him. Yeah. Um, yeah, his, the emotional was, side of Bruce. That, yes! That was, uh, wasn't that uh, John DiMaggio who did uh, yeah. the Joker? Yeah, John DiMaggio yeah. does the Joker. Uh, Jensen Eccles from Supernatural voices the Red Hood. Uh, I think it's back on Netflix. If not, order it from Amazon. I'll Great. put it on Blu-ray. Wasn't Neil Patrick Harris in that? <laughs> yes, he was Nightwing. Neil Patrick Yes, Harris. he was. Oh. Uh, Hold on, what Neil Patrick Harris pops up in Batman: Brave and the Bold, doesn't he? Yeah, as the music meister. Yeah. For all the flack Brave and the Bold got, I thought it really captured sort of the Silver Age, which is what it was supposed to. I was like, "This? Why are you mad at this? This is telling you exactly what it is." Yeah, no. that, it was. It was a really great show, especially like when he started meeting other Batmans from other dimensions, yes. and one of them was voiced by what's his name? Um, oh my God, Connelly? my brain farted. Um, Conroy? Conroy? Or yes, Adam Conroy. Yes. That was, that was awesome. Didn't, didn't Conroy voice in that, but not as Batman? 
He um, pops up as his dad once, and then he pops up as Batman again later. Yeah, man. There was also an episode where um, they wanted to do one of the episodes much like the animated series right. where Batman um, finds the guy who shot his parents. That, that he is – plays the enemy, doesn't he? That is one of the greatest episodes of – any Batman when he actually confronts Joe Chill and it's done in Brave and, and the Bold and they do it so well. And Conroy and and Mark Hamill yes. are his angel and demon sort of like, you know, voices <sighs> in his head. The, they voice uh, the Spectre and Phantom Stranger respectively. Yeah. And they're kind of having like a bar or like a wager over Bruce's like soul or something like that. Right. Uh, the The whole premise of that episode Batman find he finds where Joe Chill is, and the whole time the Phantom Stranger is telling him, you know, take justice, you know, do the right thing. The Spectre pops up in his head and says, "No, vengeance is justice. You you got to do what you got to do. He took your parents away from you. You got to kill him." And the whole time they're sort of playing it up. You don't know which way he's gonna go, but just hearing Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill sort of battle over Batman's soul is awesome for people that grew up watching Batman the animated series. That was awesome. I had to import those from America too. I'm I mean, sorry. it was on our TV. <laughs> so I had to import- okay, I, actually, actually, I, I was able to buy uh, the first box set and the second box set, but three and four I had to import, and I had to do the same with Superman. Mm. You know what? I get why you guys have your own healthcare system over there. You need it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It helps you cope with. You guys didn't even get the Superman over there. No, no. Uh, I think we might have had like the odd episodes, but that was pretty much it. Oh man! Wow. Ouch. Uh, but the, the Brave and the Bold, because it's it's kind of serving for a younger audience in in loose terms. So I'm I'm saving that one for uh, when my nephew's a little older. I'm about to uh, say, <laughs> I warn you because my 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 dad almost made the same mistake watching his godson. Uh, he's about well, he's going to be six in a couple months. He said, oh, I'll just have him watch Brave and the Bold. I was like, hold on. I have to send you episodes that he can watch. <laughs> because one of the episodes, they basically do a retelling of Emperor Joker. The storyline Emperor Joker is Joker gets cosmic powers and he just kills Batman over and over again. Like, that's actually one issue. He just keeps killing Batman over and over and over and over again. He invents new ways to kill Batman. And in Brave and the Bold, he gets the, the Batmite powers. And for a good five minutes, he drops Batman in a vat of acid, puts him in a shark tank, <laughs> guillotines him, runs him over with a train. And I'm like, yeah, don't watch that one. <laughs> Come on, I used to see that in Looney Tunes. Valid. Ooh. It's true. Mm. <laughs> Valid. <laughs> yeah. See, I've never seen Batman Brave in the Bold, so... Oh, I'm, I'm I've, I've only the... caught odd episodes here and there. It, it, is, I, it is worth... It is worth the trip yeah go see it it's 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 a really good show mm-hmm. i think cartoon network still airs some reruns of it so i'd have oh. to see so that is uh there's that um i actually wanted to ask this earlier on but i can get to it now um we have otakon coming up tomorrow uh we have different cons going on in, during the summer do do you actually go to cons beyond when people ask you to go as like an official capacity, someone hosting panels? Do you actually just go as a fan sometimes, or? Um, I I used to, <clears throat> I used to try to make it out to like cons like my friends are at. Um, nowadays, like I just, it's the same thing with the video game thing. I just don't have the time. Like I wish I could. Um, <clears throat> beyond the con, uh, the cons that ask me to go or stuff like that, I just. I just really simply, I just don't have the time, unfortunately. Like I wish that's I could. The, you know, that's the time when you want to be sitting at home playing, uh, playing your video. Yeah, games. exactly. <laughs> that's when I catch up on my gaming. Um, <laughs> but yeah, to answer your question, I wish I could. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, bringing it back to the gaming, do you have sort of a favorite list, or yeah, I guess a favorite list of things you're playing right now, or favorites that have come out in the past year? Um, yes, uh, definitely Last of Us. Anyone who hasn't played Last of Us, you need to go play it. It's it's Boards. amazing. Uh, <laughs> Even if it means buying a PS3 to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Fire Emblem Awakening is really good. Uh, no, and I, I'm not just saying that because I'm in it. I'm just, it's yeah. a solid game. No, no. Fire Emblem Awakening is really good. Please go yeah. get it. I, I, I lost I so many hours. 
<laughs> uh, so many hours of my life to that game, and not yeah, not even just because of my character. It's just it's a really solid game. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, Exili is turning out to be really fantastic. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Um, Project X Zone is fun. Like, I I I play that on and off pretty constantly because it's not something you just sit and grind through. Right. Um. Then I'm a huge fan of uh, Yuri's character from Tales of Vesperia, and he's in it. Um, <clears throat> he, I, I still, I still maintain that Yuri Lowell from Tales of Vesperia is the best JRPG protagonist, and here's why: he's the only character in these kind of games as the good guy I've ever seen outright murder villains, like outside of battles, like in cutscenes, and gets away with it. Have you guys played Vesperia? Mm. Have you, you know say, I've, I've played a little bit of Vesperia. I know what All you're right. talking. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. That... Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. This dude, the, the hero, by the way, the protagonist, goes to like this guy who's enslaving kids and women and whatever. Yep. Goes to his room at night with a sword. Right. Wakes him up and it's like, hey, I'm here to murder you. Um, this dude like pees himself. He drags him out into a sand pit. Throws him in quicksand and watches him die. Oh, the hero, the protagonist. Wow. Um, and, and yeah, that guy's like, "Hey, I really don't want to go out like this. Please help. You've got rope right there next to your feet." And he's like, "Yeah, I could, but uh, pretty sure I want to watch you die." <laughs> wow. For uh, what it's worth, he was enslaving kids. <laughs> he was enslaving yeah. kids, but damn. Yeah, most protagonists don't go that far. <laughs> no, not so much. Especially in cutscene form. It's usually just, oh, fight. Oh, you happen to die afterwards. Okay. Like, the first time he does that stuff, the game makes you think you're going to fight some guy. It's like, you know, you meet some guy in the dead of night on a bridge. He's doing some shading deals. And you're like, all right, I'm going to fight this guy. No, in a cutscene, Yuri walks up to him, stabs him with a sword, and throws his body into the river. And leaves. <sighs> wow. That, okay, that, I'm definitely. I mean, I haven't played Vesperia, and that's actually really tempted me to do it now. <laughs> it's awesome, and you're like, what the? Why doesn't anyone else do this? <laughs> why? Why does everyone else have to wait for you know turn-based strategy? Just throw them in a vat of quicksand. <laughs> exactly. Yuri even says it in the game. He's like, it's more efficient this way. <laughs> 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 that is amazing. All right, you know what? I buy it. I, 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 will, it. I will give you Yuri Lowell as one of the greatest JRPG protagonists. <laughs> Just wow. Doesn't even give us like his friends tried to call him out on. It. He's like, well, what are you gonna do about it? And they're like, I guess nothing. <laughs> That's what I thought you were gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Want to join him? <laughs> 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 oh man, it's like uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen uh, the movie Friday. It's like Debo. Yeah. What are you gonna do about it? nothing? I was just saying, Debo. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's kind of messed up. I'm just saying. Man, you tripping, Debo? Say that again. <laughs> say what? Well, uh, no, I ain't say nothing. No, I ain't say nothing. <laughs> sit back down. <laughs> I ain't say nothing, Yuri. I got mind control over Yuri. <laughs> comes, I'll be silent, but when he goes away, I'll be talking again. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> I mean, why did you do that? What are you going to do about it? Nothing. No. Uh, all right, so I'm curious. What other JRPG protagonists do you have that would just that just stand out to you? Uh, JRP protagonists, I don't know. Yuri's, Yuri's at the top of my list. Um, protagonist, JRPG protagonist. Oh, um, all right, this is kind of a throwback. Do you guys remember a PlayStation RPG called Saga Frontier? Yes. I've heard of it. I do not have it. Yes, and I think I only had it as a demo. It's it's really kind of low-key, like, under-the-radar RPG. It's it's actually one of my favorites. It's back when Square was still Squaresoft. Oh, yes. wow. Mm. <laughs> um, there's, a really, there's a really great character in there. Um, and... His his name was Loot, uh, and I really liked him not not for any real reason. He was just he's this bard character, and he he sort of just went along with the flow, and like he was he was 
his, the story was some really deep shit. Like, he, he was involved with some really crazy stuff, right? Right. But he was always just sort of there. He's like, oh, this is what we're doing. Oh, this is what we're doing. Oh, this is what we're doing. It, his friends were the ones who were, like, really aimed at saving the world, right? Yeah. It, it, it's sort of like what happens when you put the bard of the party as the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's like all the story is going on, and he's like, look, man, I just kind of want to play music. <laughs> okay. World's in danger, but I, I just want to. I just want to work on my work on my tunes, man. Thinking about it, I think we, I think in the UK we only had um, the second one, so I don't think we had the uh, we had access to the first one. First one's pretty great. I, I I still every once in a while I load it up and I play it. It's it's fun. Yeah. Uh, any other ones aside from uh, Loot and Yuri that come to mind? Uh, pff, JRPG wise, yeah. And, no, and like my, RPG protagonists, like my my list is like Loot, um, Yuri, and like Fem Shepherd from Mass Effect. I somehow sensed that one was coming. <laughs> so, so, so you you opted for a Fem Shep. Oh yeah, Jennifer Hale, man. Did you did you jump in at number two? No, I j- I, I started from the very first one, and I okay. I continued. I my save game remained the same throughout all three. Okay. And you started a new one from two as well, I guess. Uh, no, I, I I carried over my first save game from yeah. the first one. You only had to two. start from two if you came in on the PlayStation side. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because I'm pretty sure pretty sure Mass Effect One didn't have the option for female on Xbox. No, it, no, it, it did. It did. It did. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it did. It's it was a long time since I started that, so. All right, so hold on. Uh, you played Mass Effect. Did you you played it all the way through? I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. All, all right. Cool. I gotta ask. Well, I, two questions first. Did you kill Rex? No. 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 <laughs> who kills Rex? Oh, no. There are people who kill Rex. <laughs> hang, on, hang on, hang on, Justin. Yeah, Justin, communists you... kill Rex. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, Justin. Did you kill Rex? Oh hell no! Hell no! Because <laughs> Justin isn't a communist. <laughs> Well, okay, I have to confess, though. When when I went, I started on the PlayStation side, so I did too. They do the little comic or whatever, and it's really vague on why you and Rex are fighting, so I'm like, why would I want to kill Rex? No, this just seems like a disagreement that can be solved with words. I go back and play it in one, I'm like, oh, shit, this is why someone would kill Rex. Because they're scared <laughs> out of their fucking minds. Oh, man. Um, all right, so yes. question two, then. You let Rex live. I'm assuming you cured the genophage then. I um Oh god, was that was that the Kill was that the, um game number 1? Was that the choice? That with... no, that's 3 when you're yeah. on uh the Krogan homeworld. <gasps> yes, yes, I did. I did cure the genophage. Um that was a sad sad yes. mission. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. So many levels. Um who did you like, I don't know as? if it's been enough years that we can just talk about it without it really being a spoiler, but... Uh, it came out, what, 2011? Yeah, we're two years now. Yep. Uh, if you haven't finished the Mass Effect series, spoiler alert, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Morden, man. Oh, man. Morden. That was, that was harsh. I really like ca- his character, too. <sighs> Had to be him. Someone else would have gotten it wrong. It- yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm looking at the statistics right now. Since Bioware had, I think it was a, a conference, mm-hmm. uh, PAX East. I think this was uh, last year, or it was the year I went. It was the year I went. So it would have been right. the year before last. Okay, so they had this conference at PAX East where they had the statistics, and I'm staring at some of these right now. Um, eight eight percent of players did not cure the genophage. And even further, 3.8% of players killed Morden on the planet. And see, and this is why, to me, Mass Effect was so great. Given your choices in 1 and 2, you could be put in a position where not curing the genophage is actually the right answer because of of how you screwed up in the first two games. So it comes down to, can you actually kill someone who, if you played Mass Effect 2... Was really chill and probably one of your favorite characters, maybe not to bring along with you, but just to interact with. Can you do it? 
Right. And then the way he just delivers, someone could have gotten it, or someone else would have gotten it wrong in both situations. Whether it's friendly, that damn Morton, I'm sorry, it's got to be you, or it's Morton, I will kill you. Nah, it's got to be, it's got to be me, man. That brings oh, up another good question. Who is your usual team? Um, for three, let's see. It was Femshop. Um, it was, uh, I switched between Liara and Tali. Okay. Um. And I usually had, what's his name? Um, oh my god, it's been so long. What was my team? What was my team? Garrus. Um, no, it wasn't Garrus. Uh, it was. Damn it. So it had to be not James. Vega then. Not Vega. It was. It was. Um. Kaden. No. It depends oh on whether god. you killed whether you killed Kaden. Who was it? Who was before. it? Who was it? Jobic. Why can't I? I can't I freaking remember. Um I, I was gonna say I was gonna say Grunt, but that's number two. Um the, the only other male character that would be left would probably be Javik then. I think it was Javik. Uh the the Prothean, yeah? Yeah. Yes, that, that yes. was Javik. Yes. <laughs> the one guy left. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, that's see, a crazy. See, was a great character. I, I'm staring he was, at my He just team kept right saying now. how he wanted to eat everything. Like, oh yeah, back in my day, we ate you. <laughs> I'm staring at my team right now. I always had uh, Tali and Garrus. I gotta say, uh, in three, my team was Garrus and Ashley, and I just gave them both sniper rifles. That. Oh my, that's so not fair. <laughs> I hated Ashley. Well, I I didn't in the first game, but in the second after the second game, I didn't like. Ashley's her. a little racist. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little slightly bit of a racist. bitch. Yeah, slightly just racist. Well, you can just help her work bit. through her bitchiness. <laughs> <laughs> she she was the one. She in the first game, she was the one that I romanced, and in the second game, obviously, she didn't. Uh, you only kind of encounter her as I saved her and didn't kill Caden. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I killed Caden and didn't uh, and saved her and. Uh, she was the right bitch to me when I hit number two. I, yeah, she was. Even, she really was. <laughs> even when you help her work through that, she is I, I, still she still sticks to the. But you're you're part of Cerberus. How can I try? Oh, just shut up. Do you know? I I actually said I actually said that to uh, is it Rebecca Brooks when I met her at the uh, at con. <laughs> 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 I said to her, "You are such a bitch. <laughs> you were so mean to me." <laughs> Why? I just wanted to be your friend. And then I guess her promotion to Spectre got her like uh, it came with cosmetic surgery. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, apparently so. I was like, uh, I understand we're we're in the we're in another Space generation. Station. You know, we've gotten better with graphics, more defined. But uh, you weren't this defined. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to pick up tips from Miranda. <laughs> okay. I gotta say, um, I was watching my fiance go through two, and she was sit- and you know the suicide mission. Miranda keeps making suggestions, and she's about to listen to. Her. I was sitting there like, all right, Tiffany, but before you before you hit this button, just think, when has Miranda ever been right about anything? <laughs> and she's like, oh, shit, you're right. She's wrong about everything. <laughs> I I tried being nice to uh, to Jack, and uh, that doesn't work. Oh yeah, yeah. It kind it, it kind of does, kind of doesn't. But yeah, no. In in, in yeah, in number three, there's there's uh, there is there are points, but in number yeah. two, she's always, you know, con- she's still con- stand con- offish, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys uh, be uh, blow up buddies, just blow stuff up together. That's, that's true. always fun. Have you guys uh, played that Citadel DLC, like their goodbye DLC? No, not yet. And I've, I've, it's it's sitting there waiting for me to play it, but I just haven't got around to doing it. It's it's fantastic. You you need to get Grunt drunk, and when he's in the shower, just sitting there muttering to himself, <laughs> just keep clicking on him. Just keep <laughs> clicking on him. He has the best dialogue in the entire game. See, when when it was released, we were talking about it. The Citadel DLC really was. Um, it was a great thing for Bioware to do because that was sort of their their farewell and thank you to the fans. Yeah, and it was it was fan service, but not. In a cheesy sort of way. It was a legit, here you guys go. Enjoy yeah. the ride. Yeah. Now, now, were you upset by the ending of number three? 
Mm. Um, I was one of those people who really liked the journey getting there, and I re- and I, I completely understand why people were furious with the ending to number three. I I was I was re- I was kind of upset for a while too, but then I realized I really enjoyed playing the games to get to this point, mm-hmm. and so to me it, it was worth it. Like questionable ending aside, it was it was worth it to me. Um, I uh, I did everything I could to get the quote unquote true ending, and I did so that's good. I I did too. I- my, my choice that I made got me the true ending, which was a good choice in my books. Mm-hmm. And and I I, I kind of you know I, I saw what I wanted to see, and that was um, the guys are the the main people I've been trying to save the whole time. Although, you know, although I was trying to save everyone, the main people I was trying to save, which were Tali, Garrus, um, and Joker, they come off the pla- you know, they come off the ship at the end, and I was happy. Mm-hmm. So you know I. I, I, I kind of hit a point where I didn't have... I mean, it would have been nice to kind of see a bit more of what was going on elsewhere with some of the other characters and stuff, but I was happy that the characters I truly cared about in the game, that I worked to care about, survived, and that was, you know, that's what, what mattered. I, I wasn't that fussed by the fact that Shepard uh, went down, but... Right. I, I, thought it was a, I thought it you know worked to be a nice point for cutting off the game, so... Yeah. And to me... And to me, that the Citadel DLC was more of an ending for me, personally. Like, I felt that ended the game far more than the actual ending did. Like, the D- the Citadel DLC wrapped up the entire series. Right. You know, in a, in a very nice, very lovingly written kind of letter way to the fans. It's like, here you go, here's the ending you wanted, you know. Here's the celebration of the trilogy. Right. Basically. Everyone's happy and they have a big party at Shepard's condo. <laughs> and everyone gets drunk. Yep. Emergency induction, induction port. port. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I, I, I gotta say, Ryden brings up, you know, you try to save everybody. I think what makes Mass Effect 3, Last of Us, The Walking Dead so great is they sort of realistically tackle, okay, this is what happens when you try to save everybody. You're going to fail. You cannot save everybody. Now, you bring that up. Have you played uh, the Walking Dead game? Yes. Yes, I have. Yes. Oh, jeez. Okay, here we go. Lawrence, oh, Lawrence hasn't played this. Well, hold on. Uh, KJ, have you played it? I have played all the Walking Dead, even the 300 Days Oh, I haven't um, I haven't done 300 days one yet. No, there's yet. a character in there that looks exactly like me and kind of freaks me out because I thought <laughs> somehow it had imported like a sim from Sims 3. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's like this this dude like going to prison. His name is like Vinny, and he's just this Asian dude with like this half facial hair, half whatever. I'm like, that's me. That's that would have would have. That's really literally what you. I look like. It would have really frightened you if you had to voice him too. Oh, I know. I think you would have liked I, to have voiced them. <laughs> I've been would've great. Been like, like I, I don't. Not, it's not often I sit there going, "Why didn't I voice with this guy?" When I first started playing 300 Days, I was like, "Why the hell didn't I voice this guy?" <laughs> this oh, is so literally that, what I look like. Uh, oh, so that was that thing I saw on your Facebook. <laughs> uh, I'm bringing up a picture of him now. Wow. Right. <laughs> look at that guy. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I, see, I haven't, I haven't played Walking Dead. I haven't, I haven't. Mm. No excuse. No. Yeah, we've I legit, been, I legit, I legit no, we've been telling him since it was launched that he needs to play it. But yeah, no excuse. It's so good. No, I, I legitimately don't have any excuse because I do have it on uh, PS Plus, my uh, brother's account. He recently got it off of the when the PS Plus had the deal for. It, so we have the whole five episode thing we don't have the 400 days uh yet though but we have the whole you know days um chapters one through five so i, I legitimately have no excuse other than i'm playing other games and doing other things with them That's how the- dare you have a life all video right. games all the time obviously you hate freedom <laughs> <laughs> clearly clearly this is my problem did uh, you have a particular favorite chapter me yeah um in the regular game or the DLC? Uh, in the regular game. 
in the regular game, I, I like the I like the very last chapter just because of the emotional weight behind it. Okay. Um, because uh, that is when all the shit started getting real. Like, shit could not be more real. You know what I'm saying? For those who have played it. Um, and I was legitimately, like, upset. Like, I... Because, you know, you, you grow so attached to the lead character, and he's awesome. Yes. And, you know, yeah. the stuff he goes through in the fifth chapter is just gut-wrenching. It's that, it's that one... You know, that when you hit that one turning point, and then you know... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually gotta say, as as great as Chapter Five was, Chapter Three will always have a special place in my heart, just for the way it starts. Um, this is not really too much of a spoiler. You're in a town, um, and you're trying to raid a place for groceries or for supplies, and you see the walkers surrounding this girl. They're all focused on the girl. Oh yeah. And you oh, have the choice yeah. if you can either shoot her and put her out of her misery. Or use her as a distraction while you go raid the stores. And it's yeah. it, it's at that moment where it's like, all right, you know what the right thing to do is, but we're trying to survive. Right. And, and it's, if you shoot her, the zombies come after you because exactly. they hear it. And, and it's like, this is the world they live in. I think that moment sort of, solidif- sort of puts you in that world and you're just like, what am I going to do to survive? Yeah, it's even worse because she's already bitten. Right. We've seen that. She, she's already bitten. She's, she's going dead. to die. It's yeah. just a matter of, do you want to put her out of her misery? So. Yeah, see, see, for me, my favorite, um, it might be just be the horror fan in me, but the, uh, it, the second chapter was probably my favorite. Oh, man. Oh, the I one of the farmhouse. I oh, hated farmhouse. those two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! I, the thing is, I could I, I could see all that coming, as uh, as I hit that and I got, I got into that that place, I could kind of see that all coming. There was, I think, where they where you can see that they'd taken hints from some horror films. Right. They were quite obvious on the build up, what? so I I I kind of I kind of picked up on what was going on a little early. Before chapter two, I just watched Deliverance. <laughs> so, <laughs> so these two brothers come out the woods I'm sitting like all I need is banjos I'm gone I am out of here <laughs> oh man um, we, this is a, that's another reference that flew over my head by the way you've never you okay. Deliverance? I've never seen Deliverance alright dueling banjos I'm about to say, are you aware of dueling banjos do 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 I cannot say yes do the words why, why I'm gonna make them? you squeal, Piggy, mean anything to you? Okay, see that that I do know because I have actually heard about the story behind that. Okay, that's because, deliverance. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play into the age joke we've had already. See, this is what happens when you're the youngest one. <laughs> no, there's no excuse. We're not that there old. Is. <laughs> like a couple years, if that, older than you. Did, wait, how? Didn't you say you were 27? Yes. Okay, I'm 21. That's like six years. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Actually, Justin, you want to feel old really quick? Oh. You want? All right, here we go. You ready? You ready? So, just recently, I showed my girlfriend who was 23, um, <laughs> The Matrix for the very first time. Oh God! I hope you All didn't right? show this. I hope you didn't show the sequels. No, 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 just the Matrix, right? And and these are the things she told me when I showed her. She's like, man, that's so cheesy. These graphics are so dated. Oh, my that's... God. <laughs> what? Oh dear. And, you know, like the scene, the first scene where Trinity does that, you know, 360, like, you know, thing in yeah. the air. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she said that was really cheesy looking. I'm like, well, but. amazing. But that was the first time that <laughs> happened. Yeah. But. But oh man, congratulations! Yeah, because I'm I'm playing that scene in my mind now. It still looks as it did when I was a kid watching it. Oh, right. Hey, that's that's thanks. how I can visual. That's how I visualize it. I I haven't picked up the DVD for a while, but that's how I visualize it. But then you I realize have... that movie came out in what ninety eight, ninety nine. Right. 
Yeah, 99. That was a long time ago. <laughs> we are old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, I, I'm sort of reminded how old I am every time I, but, I fire up my, my Vita and I see Final Fantasy VII sitting there. <laughs> this was then again, I used, to, I used to think the... Um, I used to think the special effects in uh, Highlander were fantastic. Watch that now. That's uh, not quite the same. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> all, all I need as a reminder of my age is I look around my room and I see I still have my Game Boy Advance satchel by the door. My N64 is locked up in a cabinet somewhere. That, that's my reminder of age. Dude, no, you can't even. Don't, don't even. I have my original Nintendo system. I've um, got my, up, you know, and my my brick of a Game Boy sitting somewhere I, in my house. You don't my old suck. Game Boy. <laughs> my my old Game Boy is actually in my. Um, I think I have like this chest where I have like these little toys, and I have my original Game Boy that was this cleared, this clear um casing, in like this box that I was given. A, as a kid, that's still in my uh, toy chest. And I have, I think, my NES locked up in a closet, and I have my Super Nintendo locked up somewhere. I still have those. My N64 is pretty much in public storage, that type of thing. See, I've, I've been sorting my room ready to do some decorating in here. And when I've been moving stuff, I encountered an old game called Hackers, which was on the Commodore 64. That was uh, <laughs> still lingering around here somewhere. Nope. Well, now we all just feel old. So, <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. that's what. Well, no, yeah. here's 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 where I'm really gonna feel old. Um, when I go to Otakon, and I've noticed this, the years I keep going, the people that cosplay Luffy, the people that cosplay Goku, the people that cosplay um, the Sailor Scouts, the original Gundam pilots, they're diminishing. So it's gonna get to a point where <laughs> yeah. I don't recognize anyone being cosplayed. That that is gonna be the moment where I feel old. See, Justin, this is where you should come over here, because all those are just releasing over here. <laughs> there you go. Everyone's now cosplaying them. Oh, man. It's like oh, stepping man. back in time. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, I, I was just the other day having a nostalgia fit over Sailor Moon, and I was like, wait, I found this, I found this thing of Sailor Moon, and I'm like, I remember when I watched this as a kid. No, no, get away, get away. <laughs> Don't get me in nostalgia. <laughs> Oh, uh, hmm? I, I was about to ask one thing I wanted to get into since we talked about this with uh, Aaron Fitzgerald was the um, the Skull Girls crowdsourcing oh, yeah. for the Indiegogo oh, yeah. page. That was and, amazing. Oh yeah, that that one was great to follow along and to watch as because I was watching as the as the number kept piling up and I was like, "You're kidding me." And it was like seven hundred thousand, and then like one hour left at seven hundred thousand, and it jumped another hundred thousand to reach the last uh, stretch goal. Yeah, but yeah, that uh, was insane. Yeah. So what? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was one thing I was about to ask was, um, you were, you could say, commission slash crowdsource as part of this to do a voice that I believe you've displayed on your uh, Voices of Gaming channel? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. For those people who don't know the story behind that, I, I did these videos where I had the cast of Skullgirls just for fun coming in and just play each other uh, at Skullgirls. And since we don't, we don't have a voice story mode, they just sort of did it. Like, we voiced every character, and we didn't... Um, at the time, Charlotte, the the very nice lady who who voices uh, Double, was not there, so we just sort of on the spot had to come up with a double voice, and I just did like this Fat Albert impression. Oh, <laughs> this is amazing! And so it's like, hey, 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 Lady Valentine, you know, like. <laughs> And for some uh, reason, it was just really funny. And then, like as as we continued on, like we we sort of like gave it more character. And it's like suddenly, you know, okay, she's a nun. She's um, where she, she votes Republican, and you know, she's she's anti weed and anti abortions, and like it just started started rolling on and rolling on into this bigger ball of what the you know, um, and apparently fans really liked it, <laughs> like. They were asking for, like, Republican double skins and stuff, so... Uh, it was one of the first ideas we had for the, for one of the stretch goals. It's like, you want to just release the Republican double voice pack for, like, 
for one, like a joke, and two, like just you know, to try and get more money. And then people were really psyched about it, so we started coming up with these other like voice packs. We're gonna have um, Valley Gold uh, Pain Wheel. We're gonna have um, Salty Parasol because, like, in one of our videos, Aaron Fitzgerald lost her minds, just started um, like cussing and like just being really, really like like salty, like basically <laughs> because she was losing. And um, so we're gonna have that and a um, bunch of other really fun voices. We're gonna have Anime Peacock. Um, we're going to have Japanese Bloody Marie. Um, it's, it's going to be really fun. I think we're just going to pick a day, get together at the studio, get drunk and record all of it. <laughs> it does, uh, doesn't the announcer have to do a drunk voice for one of them? Yes. Too? <laughs> yes. It'll be perfectly in character. Yeah. <laughs> he will this actually get drunk. a fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I I saw your the the video of where I first heard the um, as you said the Republican double voice and I was hearing this and I was like oh my god this is beautiful <laughs> and then I look at the stretch goals I'm like that's actually one of the stretch it's canon. well <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's it's now canon <laughs> oh oh man well this has been. An amazing trip down memory lane. It's been awesome hanging out with you. Awesome talking to you. We want to thank you for taking time out of your day to hang out with us. Really means a thank lot. Thank you to guys, us. man. That was that was really fun. That was really great. I'm glad I was able was able to be a part of it. Uh, right. And thank Aaron Fitzgerald as well for getting us the you could say the the door for this interview. Mm. Thank you so the, much, Aaron. Th- yes, thank you, Aaron. Um. Tales of Exelia is out. Check it out. Uh, Sword, Art, Sword Art Online on Tsunami. And there was one more. And yes, there's, something there's that I'm one. not even going to try to pronounce coming out next oh, year. Oh, right. Well, I'll, I'll just I'll just mention. So in Tales of Exilia, I play Wingle of the Chimeriad. Um, in uh, Sword Art Online, I play Schmidt. Five episodes, five and six. And there is a Vita game coming out. It's it's apparently pretty popular. Coming out early next year called. Dungan Ranpa. Um, uh, oh, what was the second half of that? It was like Trigger, Dungan Trigger Ranpa. Ha- ha- Havoc. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger Happy Havoc. Uh. Trigger Happy Havoc. And I'm going to play go. uh, Haga Curry in that. So look out for that. There's also there's also a couple more, like a few more projects releasing later this year and more next year, but I can't talk about them, unfortunately. Man. They're super awesome. But when the time comes, follow me on Twitter and Facebook and I'll announce them there. Uh, that okay. is at KG Tang. Wow, I completely butchered your name. Sorry about that. Um, it's cool. It, it's yeah. It's it, basically it's at um, KG Tang. Um, or as Lawrence likes to say, Kaiji. Kaiji. It's spelled that <laughs> way. So yeah. I don't fault people for that. It, it makes it easy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just keep thinking the Japanese pronunciation, and I'm like Kaiji. Oh no, he's not Japanese. What am I doing? <laughs> so, so yeah. I get that. I, all the time. Don't even worry about it. Uh, but yes, we had fun. We're happy to hear that you had fun. Hopefully we can do this again sometime. Uh, as always, we want to thank you guys for hanging out with us. And mm, the next show, I don't know if we're going to do a show next week, but we'll let you guys know when our next show is. And again, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, at We Are Gamers. Uh, stay abreast of our activities. And I will try to have some sort of recap thing uh, when I get back from Otakon. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Later. Later, everybody. Later.